Oh, hey guys, do you want to master your sats and get full marks on the arithmetic paper? Of course you do. Well, you better watch this video then, because today we're going to look at some questions that I think are some of the hardest questions on the arithmetic paper. And I think this because I've seen so many children get them wrong over the years where they're just not quite sure what to do. Well, by the end of this video, you're going to find it so easy, you'll wonder why anyone found it hard in the first place. So here we go. Let's dive in and I'll talk you through my thoughts as we go through these questions. So this is a question that came up in the 2023 arithmetic paper for the Key Stage 2 SATs. And, uh, and I saw a lot of children get stumped on it. They didn't really know what to do or they tried to lay out this question and end up putting their decimal point in the wrong place or whatever. Just something went wrong. And I'd like to show you a better strategy to solving this one. When I see a question like this, so I've got 3.2 multiplied by 12. I don't really like working with decimals. You might be confident working with decimals and doing this 3.2 times 12 and solving it like that. Okay. But I've got a nicer way to think about these questions that just avoids the use of decimals when we don't need to. Quite often, you are given a question in the SATs where one of them is a decimal that if it was just multiplied by 10, so it was just moved up one column, it would just be a whole number again. And I want to use this strategy here. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply our decimal number by 10 to make it a whole number. We're going to solve that question. And then to balance out what we just did, where we multiplied one of the factors by 10, we're going to take our answer and we'll just divide it by 10 again at the end. And that will balance this out. Okay, so we're times by 10, divided by 10 at the end, it will be the right answer. So let's do exactly that. Let's do 32 times 12. And you might be thinking, why have you written 12 in one box like that? That should be long multiplication. Not really, because we know the 12 times tables. We can treat 11 and 12 kind of like a one digit number because we, all, we actually know the times tables. 12 times 2 I know is 24. And 12 times 3 I know is 36, plus the 2 is 38. So 32 times 12 is 384. Therefore, 3.2 times 12, so dividing my factor back down by 10, will give me the answer of 38.4. I've shifted my digits back down one to account for the fact that I shifted them up one to one of the factors in the first place. And this strategy works every time. Let me show you another example that also came up in the, 20, in the 2023 SATS paper. We had 0.4 times 37, and I saw children going, oh, I don't know what to do, it's a decimal number. Well, don't worry about it. Let's just turn this into four times 37 by multiplying 0.4 by 10, so we can move it up a column. Let's solve four times 37 first. 37 times four. 4 times 7 is 28, carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus the extra 2 is 14. So 4 times 37 is 148. Therefore, if I divide this answer by 10, I'm, ac I'm accounting for the fact that I timesed one of my factors by 10 in the first place. The actual answer to this question is 14.8. I just shifted those digits down one column in place value, and I got the correct answer, 14.8. Does that make sense, guys? So simply take the factor that's become a decimal, times it by 10 to turn it back into a whole number, find out the answer to that, uh, that multiplication question, and then just divide your answer by 10 at the end to balance out the fact that you times by 10 at the beginning. I'd like you to have a little practice with these questions, okay? And I'm just gonna give you a hint for the first one. I'd be turning this into 45 times 15, and then I'd be adjusting my answer at the end to help me. Pause the video, have a go at these three questions, come back for the answers. Right, let's do it then, guys. So 45 times 15, we're going to have to work that out first. Now, to save me doing long, long multiplication, I'm actually going to break this down in my head into 45 times 10 and 45 times 5, and then I'll add those two parts together, okay? 45 times 10 is 450. And 45 times 5, 5 lots of 45, would be half of 10 lots of 45. So it would be 225, because it's half of that. If I add those two parts back together, I'm going to get myself an answer of 675. Now, is that my final answer? 45 times 15 is 675? No, because my original question was 4.5 times 15. I need to divide my answer by 10 and get the real answer of 67.5. Give yourself a massive pat on the, not the head, that's boring, a pat on the nose if you got that right. Next question, I'm going to turn that 0.6 into 6 for a minute and just do 17 times 6. 
So 17 times 6. You might be able to do this in your heads, but for the sake of showing you, 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 1 is 6, plus the extra 4 is 10. So is my answer 102? No, because I've got to remember that I times the factor by 10. So I should divide my answer by 10 to make up for that, which will give me an answer of 10.2, not 102. And my final one I'll do down here, 13.5 times 8. I don't like this 13.5. I'm going to shift them all up a, a column by timesing it by 10 to make 135 times 8. I'm going to solve that question. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus the 4 is 28. And then 8 times 1 plus 2 is 10. So I've solved 135 times 8 is, is 1080. I'm going to simply divide this number by 10 to get 108.0 or just 108. We don't need to write 0 at that point. It wouldn't be wrong, but that would be the answer. So the answer to this question is 108. So to summarize, guys, we multiply the factor by 10 to, to make it not a decimal anymore. And then we balance that out by dividing our answer by 10 to make sure we got the correct answer at the end. Cool. So next up, this is you might be looking at this thinking it's just more of the same. Well, I want to show you a different strategy for this question. This came up in the 2018 paper. It's one of my favorite questions of all time for just testing children's ability to understand maths and think outside the box. This is really cool. I'm going to show you something. and I've got a pair of scales down here to show you, right? I'm going to do what I did last time and multiply this by 10 to make it 39. I'm getting rid of that decimal. But to save me a future job of dividing by 10 at the end, I notice that this, fact, this factor actually ends in 0, so it could already be divided by 10 to make 3. And here's the cool thing. If you multiply one factor by 10, but you divide the other factor by 10, the answer doesn't change. You've balanced out what your answer is going to be by multiplying by 10 and then dividing by 10 to get back to where you were. It doesn't matter that you did it to separate factors. Isn't that cool? So 3.9 times 30 is actually the same question as 39 times 3. And I know which one I'd want to be answering more easily, and that's 39 times 3. 39 times 3, again, you can probably do it in your heads, but just write it down for the sake of being accurate. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. It's 117. I don't have to do anything to that answer now because I already balanced it out with my other factor. Unlike before, where I didn't do that with my other factor, I had to balance it out with the answer. This time it's done. It's 117. Isn't that really cool? We've got another example here. 0 0.9 times 200. Maybe you can tell me why I've turned this into 9 times 20. It's the same question. It will have the same answer. Can you see it? I've multiplied 0 0.9 by 10, but to balance that out, I've divided 200 by 10, and I've got 9 times 20. I can do that in my head. It's 180. Done. How cool is that, guys? I've seen children sat there doing this. 0 0.9 times 200 were laid out, and they're like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. They're getting it all wrong. It's just 9 times 20. Think about this, okay? Equals sign. It is just a set of scales, isn't it? That's all it is, and as long as we keep them balanced, it's fine, okay? Awesome stuff. Right, practice that then. Um, three questions on the screen. Have a go at those three using my lovely scales balancing technique and uh, come back for the answers. Right, we're back. I'm going to turn these questions into something much nicer. I'm going to turn this one into 7 by dividing it by 10. But I'm going to turn this factor into 5 by timesing it by 10. So that means 70 times 0 0.5 is the same as 7 times 5. My answer is 35. Woohoo! One down. Easy peasy. Right, same again. I'm going to turn this one into 22 by timesing it by 10. But to balance it out, I'm going to divide this by 10 and make it 8. So now I'm left with 22 times 8, which is a much easier question to solve than 2.2 times 80. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 2 is 16. Plus the extra one this time is 17. My answer is 176. Don't have to do anything to it. Awesome. And the last one here, go downwards this time. I'm going to make this 3 by timesing it by 10. Move it up one column. To balance that out, I'm going to move this down one column. Be careful not to take off both zeros. Don't divide it by 100 because then actually you've, you, you're imbalanced again then. If you times by 10 but divide by 100, that's no longer going to balance out. Take off one zero by uh, divide by 10. 
and we're left with 40 times 3 being the same question. I know that 4 times 3 is 12, so 40 times 3 is 120. My answer to that question is 120. That's it. Did you get all three right? If you did, well done. You've just mastered one of the, the things that catches children out every single year in the SATs. I've got one more question that I wanted to look at. Uh, if I can move on to the next slide, that is. Here we are. And the reason that I like this question is you can use the strategies we've just done, by the way. You can use the first strategy by multiplying this by 10, making it 5 times 28, and then just dividing your answer by 10 at the end. But I, I once saw a child in the SATs answer this question, I'm not joking, in less than two seconds. And afterwards, I said to them, what, uh, what strategy did you, did you use there? Because I saw you look at that question and just go, eh, dumb. And this child said to me, well, Hayden or Mr. Stevens, you would have called me. Uh, I know that 0 0.5 as a fraction is the same as a half. And I know that times can be uh, said as the word of. So I knew that this question was actually just saying half of 28. And I said, you genius. I love this mathematical thinking. It's brilliant. And it's absolutely right. So this is an advanced thing. You don't need to do this. But if you're looking to be just that next level of mathematician, you want to be the best that you can be, then it's worth understanding this, that if you have a decimal like 0 0.5 and you happen to know what its equivalence is as a fraction, you could turn this into a fraction of amounts question, right? This just says half of 28. It's the same as doing 5 times 28, which is 140, and then dividing it by 10 to balance out the fact that you made 0.55. And hey presto, you get 14 in the end. But this child did it in two seconds. Here are two other examples I just made up quickly um, to show you this. What do you know, and maybe you don't, but do you know what 0 0.25 is as a fraction? Because a lot of children have learned and memorized that that is the same as a quarter. And times also means of, which maybe you've learned today as well. This question, 0 0.25 times 32, is actually just the same as saying, what's a quarter of 32? In other words, divide it by 4. It's 8. That's pretty cool. And the same with this one. When you look at 0 0.1, can you think about what that is as a fraction? Well, it's quite a basic fraction. It's a tenth, right? It's a 1 in the tenths column. This is a tenth of 39. In other words, divide it by 10. The answer is 3.9. Yeah? It's kind of cool, isn't it? So there you go. A little advanced um, strategy for you there to, to think about and uh, to leave you with in this video. But the best mathematicians I've ever taught... Um, understand that strategy very, very well. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with these three questions. Um, how you solve them is up to you using strategy one, strategy two, or maybe even being able to use that advanced strategy that I just taught you um, for one of them. Question three comes to mind. Guys, thank you so much. Leave a comment down below. Please, we love to read your comments. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Also, let us know your three answers. See if you got it right. See if everyone else is commenting the same thing. Are you in the right place or, are you, or do you need to watch this video again? Go back through those strategies. Anyway, I won't ramble on anymore. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next SATS prep video.